So just in case you haven't seen any of the other videos relating to this motor, this is a 79 Evner 55 horsepower and is a short shaft. Uh, the engine, or drive shaft rather, was so seized into the crankshaft, aka power head. Um, the only way to get it out of there was to cut the drive shaft off. The um, plan was to leave the lower unit intact and use it when I need it. Fortunately, that didn't quite happen when I had to cut the drive shaft. So I'm probably going to take it apart, get the drive shaft out of there, and this video is just showing you how to do that. Um, it is pretty common to a lot of the uh, other engines that I've done. Slight differences, but they're all they're all kind of the same. But if you have an engine like this and wanted to see how yours is done, at least you know a little bit better of a a video. So let's dig in. Okay, let's uh, get this kind of thing rotated a little. So, there's a lot of corrosion, uh, at least what looks like corrosion, going on in the. Uh, bearing carrier there, so I'm going to get some penetrating catalyst, aka PB blaster. Spray it in there, let it soak in for a little while before I get started. Jeez, look at my desk, it's already a little greasy. Yeah, well. Alright, so to do this repair we're going to need a few special tools. We need parts of a universal puller kit. Just the puller and screw. We might need the handle, but probably not. Um, puller legs. These are sold each, so you need three of them. Um, also, I don't think they actually sell them anymore, so you'd have to go on eBay and find some used ones, or new ones if they're out there. Um, they're used as a set of three, so I think when, you know, people come across lots of stuff they want to sell, they see three and they say like, Ooh, I'm going to sell three of these. No, they're, they're, you need all three, but it, I had to buy them separately, but whatever. And then some uh, snap ring pliers. Pretty important. Uh, drive shafts, holding socket. Should have needed, but since somebody cut the drive shaft off, we're gonna have to improvise and use the old pipe wrench should we need it. So let's get busy. Now, usually I do the uh, top first and then do the bottom half. Um, I don't know why I started here first, but I already got the tool in my little uh, impact wrench, so I'm just gonna go for it. Um, he's wondering what I'm doing. There's three screws inside of there, they gotta come out. So there's one. Usually you'll find a bunch of crud inside of here, so just use your socket to move it out of the way. There's two. And there's a third. Now, three isn't entirely that common. Most of the time you're going to see uh, four. Two on top, two on the bottom. But I think they only use three because of the shape of these. So, if you're using this engine, or excuse me, using this video to uh, take yours apart, Keep in mind, you probably have four screws down there. All right, now I'll take the uh, water pump off and the shift rod. Bolts are off. Just gonna unscrew the shift rod. Now it comes. Now I'll go find a uh, something to hammer this off. Should only take a uh, couple of light little taps. Probably don't want to do it on the screw holes, since that's where the thing's usually the weakest. Also. Got to get off the uh, water pump here. All that's left of it. Pretty, uh, pretty well in there, actually. I can pry it off via the plate here.
quite expecting this one. The only thing I need to get to are these bolts, so that's the only thing I'm getting to. Four bolts are out. That's the important part. The rest, it can stay there for all I care. Alright, now for the inside. So we got the uh, three bolts loosened below already. Now we just need to assemble our puller. It's odd that it's not going straight in there. Maybe I nicked it or something. Okay. Sure, these are as lined as they're going to get. Be a little off on some, but should be okay. All right. Might use the impact wrench here if this doesn't go okay. Something just broke. And housing split. So, uh, yeah, now we uh, have another bad housing. Not much we can do about that. All right, housing is up, and on this dropped. Spider webs, so that's what it looks like. And so I don't quite know if it cracked or not. It didn't feel like it, but it definitely bowed out a little bit. That I'm crazy. Okay, I don't know. All right, now we gotta get the uh, circlip pliers, retraining ring pliers, I don't know what you wanna call them, but either way we need to get them. So, they go down inside. It's a little hard to locate them sometimes in little holes they need to go to, but let's angle with them a little bit, get it in. Looks like one side is pretty well stuck. So uh, what I could probably do is 
twist it out of there. The problem is that I don't want to hurt my pliers. And I think they're worth more than these gears. So I should be able to go in there and uh, kind of work the ring around with the flathead. I was looking for a smaller one, but no real luck. So in theory, I should be able to get the ring to kind of twist itself out of there. Problem was, I can't find a flathead skinny and long enough to be able to get it in there and my hand, so I'm just kind of using this big one. Well, anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to get the camera out of the way and uh, see if it works. Yeah, that worked fine. So, first ring's out. Now I'll try for the second. No issue with the second one. Except I dropped my pliers on the way to setting that down, so that was pretty uncool. But what are you going to do? So now there is the reverse gear and that little lock ring. Um, we're going to use the uh, twist back and just kind of jiggle it method to get it out of there. So move the camera back a little bit. And uh, yeah. Also, my uh, clamps came loose. Those tightened down a little bit more. thrust ring washer thing and the uh, reverse gear fell out. Looks like we got no uh, real clutch dog away or damage or any teeth issues so gear should be salvageable. Now we're going to have the fun part of getting the uh, prop nut off. So let me find a wrench, get in there and get it out of there. Alright so I have an 11 16 wrench attached to the penny nut. Now since I am working alone, I'm going to use some zip ties here to hold the wrench in place for me. Uh, these are weak zip ties. I couldn't find any strong ones, but I've had pretty good luck doing this in the past. So hopefully uh, history repeats itself now. So usually, like I said, you'd use a drive shaft socket here, but don't have that option. So I'm going to use a pipe wrench. So let's uh, see how well this works. By the way, I have no idea how to use pipe wrench properly. I'm assuming this isn't it. Okay. Apparently my pipe wrench sucks. So, looks like my wrench slipped off, so that's pretty uncool. Kind of expected. So, new plan is to hold it while I go. So another problem, this thing's in gear. Every time I twist this, it turns the prop shaft and throws everything off, so let me get it out of gear. Screw the uh, shift rod back in. So 
I don't know if being in, in gear out of gear really made a difference in the uh, attempt here, but it sounded like it would, right? Alright. Let me see if I have a better pipe wrench, too. I don't. If I do it up here, some of the frayed metal might give a place to grab onto. Opinion, that is pretty well off. So now we need to get the drive shaft out of there. It should pull right out. Doesn't look like it's giving us that option. So we're going to go back to pulling this off so we can get a puller onto the drive shaft. Correction, no need. So that's good. Well, that's uh, there's our unit. Nothing but fun times here, huh? Alright, let me get rid of this. Okay, now that the head debunkle's over, get the engine upright, get the uh, rest of the gear assembly out of there. Uh, we also got a pinion nut. Should probably uh, rotate the engine down, jiggle it until that comes out. Pinion is there. Now the pinion nut is just below it. Stuck. Why are these loose again? Well, anyway, I'm going to tighten these down and get the uh, pinion nut out of there. Alright, this should pull right out, but it's not. The plan is to use a V6 style, well, V4 V6 style drive shaft puller with some longer bolts on it, attach it to the propeller shaft, use the backing plate here to force it off. That is the plan. Whether it works or not, it's going to be a whole different story. But it's good in theory. So we'll uh, see how it goes here in a second. Let me uh, get some bolts and tighten that down. No, wrenches rather. All right. It should be pretty well attached at that point. And yeah, I've never done this before, so. I mean, I see no reason why it wouldn't work. But, as the most experienced, I will learn shortly. So we just do one a little bit at a time. Well, 
That didn't take much. Just a little bit of knock to get it loose. So, pretty handy. Now we're going to get a first look at what our gears look like. Well, right off the bat, see problems. Missing a tooth. There goes some uh, gear residue. There's some uh, large metal shred of something. So, uh, yeah, doesn't look like our uh, gear set's going to work out too well for us. I don't know what that is. Well, let's get this thing taken apart. I mean, need a forward gear, so might as well, right? Get junk out of the way. Okay, so uh, now that I've started doing this, I don't think I've ever actually done this on film before. So, there's plenty of videos out there, guys, showing you how to take this apart. This uh, this will be my version. Uh, you can see some little nicks there. And right there. I'm thinking a piece of metal was wedged inside of there, or something was wedged in there, causing that not to slide right out. So, no big deal. Got it out of there. So, we got a little spring in here. We got to find one of the ends. And just kind of get it started. Now, they say this is a one-time use spring. So keep that in mind. If you wind up replacing it, you don't need to be careful taking it apart like I am. But anyway, so all you need to do is kind of work your way around it, get that spring out of there. That'll release the pin that holds in the clutch dog. You can see some marks on our clutch dog there too. right out on its own. Now that'll slide forward. The clutch dog will slide off. And there's our basic prop shaft. So let me get a rag, clean that up a little bit. It'll kind of give you a better idea of what it looks like. Yep, nothing to it. Uh, clutch dog looks fine. Teeth aren't rounded off. And aside from some little marks right there, looks perfectly fine. So, prop shaft's good, clutch dog's good. Now, forward gear. Kind of thinking our metal came from the thrust bearing, which it surely did. Um, it's it's falling apart. You can see it missing some right there. And then these are just kind of on their way out. So, how do we view? Had this engine to run, we started up first and tried using it. Probably would have ran into all kinds of problems. So maybe it's good if you're uh, awakening an old outboard to uh, kind of take it apart, give it the once over first. So the uh, forward gear, two uh, pretty good missing teeth. So I'm kind of wondering if it's possible the owner didn't even know that was there. So. Obviously, you don't put an engine back together missing two teeth like that, but chances are it probably worked fine. Well, this failure would have happened pretty soon with the bearing looking like that anyway, but still. So the only thing we really got left now is our uh, little shifter assembly. Um, it's probably fine, but you don't know what kind of metal shavings might have gotten inside of the uh, bearing there. So, yeah, it's kind of a concern. So here is our pinion. A uh, little hard to see the damage, but there you go. Here's one chewed up tooth. The back side. A uh, pretty chewed up tooth there. The one there. So, pinion's not really any good either. So, a little unfortunate, but these things happen. Well. That's the end of this video, taking apart the lower unit. Um, 
what are we left with? We have a good shift rod, prop shaft, clutch dog, and a forward little shifter assembly there. So damaged parts, reverse gear, pinion, bearings, probably all of them, and the housing itself. So all in all, this uh, lower unit, pretty junky.